Hello and welcome back. In the next video in our hacking series, today we're going to be going over a couple of fuzzing tools. We're specifically going to look at Foof and Derby, and they're both, both terminal tools. I'm going to show you some of the few options we have with them, and then we're going to run them up against a website I have hosted on my server here. So let's hop over into my Cali and we'll get started. Okay, here we are in my terminal on my Kali machine. And the first tool we're going to use is FUF, F-F-U-F. And we'll just hit enter here. We'll take a look at the options real quick. Scrolling back up to the top, we can see that this actually is an acronym, stands for Fuzz Faster You Fools. One of the reasons I enjoy using this tool. Here, we won't be going into these today's, but they do have several HTTP options. So you can actually craft a packet to send to the server. So if there's some type of header tag or something that you found out that you need to include in order to get information back from the server, whether it's a cookie or something else like that, you can use these options. The one option from here we will be looking at today is gonna to be this recursion. So that way if it finds a directory, it will go into that directory and rescan to look for things. We do also have an option for depth and strategy. Won't be going into these, but depth pretty much you set this and starting from the root directory where you first start your scan, how many levels down do you want it to go? And the strategy, you can look into this a little bit. This does give you some type of options on how aggressive you want it to be. And of course here, dash u for our target URL that we're going to be scanning. Okay, here in the general option, just so you know, if you need to see version information, it is a capital V with this tool. And the one option here we're going to be using, just so it's easier for you to see on the video, is going to be dash C for colorized output. You also have an option here, which I think is kind of neat, to get the output in a JSON. But we'll go over that more with the output file. And of course, the small v is for verbose output, so you can see more information about what's going on back and forth. Okay, here are the two option categories that are going to be the most important, match and filter. These are ones that when I'm doing CTFs on Try Hack Me, I tend to use a lot. They're basically the same, but what they do is match looks for the specific information you're getting. So this match C, the MC up here, looks for the HTTP status code. So say if you want to look for websites that are only returning status codes 200s, you do dash MC 200, you do 200 dash 299, like it shows in the default over here, and that will send you back results that are only found pages that the website can give you. Whereas down here in FC, you do FC-200, dash or FC 200, and that would actually filter out the 200s. So this is useful if you come across a lot of 401s, 403s, or 301 redirects, stuff like that, and you want to get those out of the way, you can just use this FC and put those HTTP status codes in there, and it'll actually filter them out from the response. All right, there are three things in the input options here that I would like to point out. First one is going to be the dash W. This is going to indicate our word list that we wanted to use. This dash E, which I'll show you in an example here in a little bit, you can actually tell it what extensions to append on the words to see if it can find anything. And the last one is this request, file containing the raw HTTP request. So if you've captured a request and you need to replay it in order to find information, this is the option you would use for that. Right. And then finally we have our output options. Your standard dash O, you give it the name of a file, that's gonna be your standard option there. You can also use this dash OF and it can actually set the file format. It defaults to JSON, but you have these other options as well, including CSV, which is nice. And then if you need to, the dash OD, you can actually set the directory for where the file will output to. Alrighty, so now since we got that out of the way, let's try a few examples here to show you how to use it. So you can see here we got the dash W, and we've set the word list to the user share word list dir b common.txt. If you have Kali, you should already have this installed. This particular common file is something I just like to start with whenever I'm doing a box for the first time. We have our dash u here and HTTP, so we're going to be hitting port 80. This is the IP address of the web of the server that we use in the MMAP video. And then here's the key thing. You have to use your keyword, which by default is fuzz. And you need to put that here, or if you're wanting to fuzz a header dash H option, you need to put this where you want the words from the word list to be inserted. So in this case, it's going to access this website and then try to find that word from the word list after it. And then here we're going to colorize the output, so hopefully it's a little bit easier for you to see in the video. So I'll run this and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. As you can see, it only took five seconds, but it's because it's on my home server and we're on the same network here. And you can see why I like the colorized output. Your 200s, which are usually going to be the ones you're wanting to look at the most, are going to be in green. 
Sapporo 3s, which are your Forbiddens, are in this yellowish, orangey color. And then your redirects are in blue. So you can see here, it did find the index.php. It found PHP info. You can see it found both the extension and the non-extension version of those. So some of you who may have been doing things for a while may notice that these blue ones, the TWiki test, PHP my admin dev, those are folders on Apache servers. So how do we look into those? Well, you could go one by one, but Fuff does have recursion built in. So you gotta do is just set the option here like I've done on the end. And we'll run this, and as you see, each time it finds a directory, it's going to add a new job, and it's going to queue it. As you can see, it adds the fuzz at the end. And anytime you're going to be doing a box on try hack me or hack the box, you probably won't see it go by this quick. Again, this is because it's local here on my network. But as you can see, each time it goes through, it finds another folder, it adds it to the queue, and then it starts scanning it again. And there we go, there's the end. So that was a lot of output. And again, this is why it has the dash O option because this is something you would definitely want to save to a file so it's easier to grab or easier to look through and you wouldn't have to keep scrolling back and forth through. Okay, so that was the Foof tool. That's the one I personally like using. That was just kind of a quick overview on a few of its options and how to use it. Another tool that I know a lot of people like is Derb. There is a third one, GoBuster. I won't go over that one here. They're pretty much the same for the most part. Each of them has their own unique options and unique output and stuff like that. So it just takes some time to go through the help option and really read and look at it. If you're curious about anything, do a search for it. There's plenty of information out there to help you depending on which tool you want to use. So here we are in the help menu for Derby. As you see, it's pretty simple. You just got your program, target URL, your word list, and then your options. Now, unlike Foof, it doesn't have a switch for the URL or the word list. You just type it in. You can see here, there's not quite as many options with this one, but it is a really good tool and it does have recursion turned on by default. Now, the thing with this recursion though, is that it also has a stop warning message set by default. So you have to use this dash W to turn it off because basically it looks to see if you could just access the website and it lists its contents when you access it. And if so, it won't scan it. But if you do this dash W, it will go ahead and scan it. So we'll use that option as well. And then another option that I like to use if I'm using this tool is this dash T. So that way it doesn't append the slash on the end of the URL because sometimes I can return false results or you, you can miss something. I forgot to show it with foof and it's a dash lowercase e on there and this tool it's a dash capital x for extension it worked the same you just give your extensions like html php txt and a unique one that i recently came across on a box on try hack me db for database you just you put those in comma separating them no spaces and the tool will append them onto the words as it searches okay now let's get ready to run an example here with the derb tool see we've got our target website here ending in the slash we've got our common.txt word list here We're using the dash t option again so it doesn't add one of these slashes after it puts the word on the dash w so it'll ignore any warnings and the capital x and we're going to give it the php text and db to scan with the words to see if it finds anything. So let's run this and see what we find. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now this is one reason I'm not too fond of this tool, even though I know a lot of people do like it, is setting these extension options here. You can see it only found this one. Whereas in Foof, what it'll do is it will take all 4,600 words from this file. I'll search for them. Then I'll go back and search with the .php extension, the .text, and .db. So basically it does the search four times. So what I'm gonna do here is just to show you this tool and how its output looks. I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to run this. Got most of the scan done. I went ahead and canceled it. So you can see here, in this PHP my admin libraries, it went down recursively by default and it found several other directories inside of it. And these little pluses here, just like actual web pages that it found. Now when it goes to scan library, uh, here's the warning I was talking about. Directory is listable, no need to scan it. Use the SFW if you want to scan it anyways, which we did set. So I went ahead and scanned it and it did find two files in here for us. But this is the output that it uses, and it's not too bad. I do like it. I do wish it had a color option. I don't think it does, but it'd be nice to have something besides these little indicators here to kind of distinguish the output. Now, real quick, if you are still new to the terminal and you're having a little bit of a hard time, the one thing that I will give the team behind Derb is that they have a GUI called Derb Buster. And here you can just set your target URL. You can actually browse to the word list you want to use. You got your little slider here for your threads. 
you have all your options here it's really a useful tool if you're not if you don't feel comfortable on the command line okay so that was just a little quick run through using two of the common terminal tools for website fuzzing foof and derby there are many more options out there for fuzzers and i encourage you to time, take time to look around play around with them, see which ones you like, have several of them because some of them work better in certain circumstances than others. Some of them have options that make things like altering packet information that you're sending back and forth, request information a lot easier than others do. It's definitely a playground. If you can, set up a virtual machine with a website that you can sit there and just practice with so you don't have to constantly worry about using a box from one of the websites or potentially causing problems on somebody's server. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me next time. We'll be looking at how to actually go over the website and the pages that we found using the fuzzer and looking for anything that could be a vulnerability or something further that we want to investigate. And we'll, that'll be what we'll be going over next time. So I hope you join me then. Until then, hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time.